Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zaid here with another episode of Zaid's Experience. So today I'm going to be talking about what I've been up to, what my diet has been like for the past couple of weeks, actually. I haven't quite reported to you guys. I'm back on that. I'm going to talk to you how my carnivore diet has been working for me and how the diet has been evolving and how I've been evolving along with it and how I've been learning from it um, in these past couple of weeks. It's been quite surprising, to be honest. But let's cut all the chit chat out and let's check this out. So great. Thanks for joining me on another episode, guys. If you guys haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It really does make a difference. And if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up once we are done with it. But moving on. Yes, I am still doing the carnivore diet, and yes, I very much like my carnivore diet. But uh, as of very recently, I had to change a couple of things uh, that I think weren't quite working for me, specifically for me. I know a lot of people have had a lot of success with the carnivore diet. I know they've had just some tremendous results. And although it has worked for me in many ways, it has helped me in many aspects, such as hair growth, my acne has been diminished dramatically any dry skin that i had uh went away all of it just kind of went away and a couple of other aspects just really like you know the fat uh gain really just stabilized quite a bit i don't lose a lot of fat and that's because of something i discovered that i will disclose in another video that's coming up that'll be next week's video but yeah now i know the reason why i'm not losing fat even though i'm doing carnivore diet which is basically no carbs or anything like that it's just basically protein and fat um uh, but I'll, more on that later but yes most my diet is mostly now 85 to i think 95 percent carnivore it's still pretty good but i have added a couple of things due to not necessarily digestive problems but i think there's things that can be aided in this particular case um so let me explain that so 85 to 95% of the diet is carnivore, but the other 50% has been fermented foods. As I showed you guys on my last two videos, I think, yeah, two videos ago, I went ahead and I showed you guys basically my new pets. Yes, when you're doing fermentation, when you're playing the fermentation game, you start to realize that you acquire new pets, you basically find new ways to get all these nutritious benefits out of these foods by just you know finding better ways of extracting all these minerals all these vitamins out of all these other foods that we think aren't quite suitable for us or they're not quite suitable in their raw form so what we do is we ferment them we ex and we extract these minerals these nutrients and then these foods become very bioavailable but only through that process would i consume these foods and as i mentioned to you guys some of the stuff that i started to encounter that really really worked for me was pickles i started pickling my own pickles and that made a huge huge difference i'll go into a little bit more detail right now kimchi was something else that really really worked sauerkraut uh, I'm still not completely sold on sauerkraut, but I haven't done my own. I've only bought in store bought sauerkraut and I kind of, uh, I really didn't like it, but, but I'll get back into it and I'll definitely give it another shot. I know a lot of people love sauerkraut, but uh, I'm, I'm still kind of at the border on it. Kombucha was another one. Uh, I started making my own kombucha and I started testing for super low levels of sugar. Cause I really don't want a lot of sugar in my kombucha. I've actually gotten to um let like a gram to half a gram of sugar and so i'm super happy with that and yeah my, the, the kombucha tastes great there's a lot of good benefits to it there's a lot of good stuff that comes with kombucha and since i have complete control of it i know what's going into it i know what's good for me and i know what isn't good for me and then the final thing would be kefir and I tried water kefir, but water kefir is just not for me. It's, uh, there's too many things. There's, uh, it's not complicated to do, but there's just some things that were, I, I didn't see any benefits even after drinking it for like two weeks. And with everything else, I really saw a difference in what I was like, just adding the pickles after a meal. That was a massive difference. And again, I'll explain right now why. Uh, the kimchi I saw immediately. Kombucha I saw after like a week, I, I saw a couple of like little signs. And the fifth one was the kefir, the water kefir. Um, but I didn't see much with that one. But what I did see a massive, massive improvement was with 
milk kefir. Milk kefir is just a whole nother ball game. It's completely revolutionized the way I think about fermented foods and their benefits. It really has. And even though they, they now may form anywhere from 15 to 10% of my diet, all these fermented foods, I don't think about them as a food specifically. I think about them as supplements. My main, main diet source is basically my meats and I have been incorporating a lot more fish into my diet. I have been lowering my meats a little bit more and I have been raising my fish. I need to get a little bit more polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats as opposed to just straight saturated fats. Um, and that's just specific to my case. That's something that was, that's just gonna be working for me at the moment. But yes, I think about this 15% of foods, fermented foods, solemnly fermented foods, as just that, as supplemental to my diet right now. The reason why I, why I use these was, um, even when I was eating a fully carnivorous diet, you guys saw I've done the carnivore diet twice for 90 days. And for most people that try out the carnivore diet, they see pre some pretty amazing results even in the first month. And for me, it I mean, I probably came from a really disrupted um, micro gut biome. And so it took me a little bit longer maybe than most people to actually acclimatize myself a little bit more to the diet. But I think we can safely say that the first 90 days should have so shown some massive results and they did, they improved a lot of things, but the weight loss just wasn't there. And that's something that kind of concerned me at first, but I, you know, I saw the healthy benefits and I was happy with that. Then the second time around that I tried my carnivorous diet, I saw that Actually, my body got super acclimatized to the diet, but I didn't lose as much weight the second time around. So that really got me thinking, is this carnivore diet for me? Is it for everybody? And if it's if it really isn't for me, why? Why is it not for me? So I really started to find a couple of things that got me a little distraught while on the carnivore diet. And it's nothing bad, it's just something that I noticed on me. So some of the things that I noticed was that although my bloating was down quite considerably, like almost to nothing, I did notice that every now and then I felt a little bit heavy. And every now and then it took me a little bit longer to get out of like the state of, I guess, overconsumption of meat. And even though I was eating on the carnivore diet quite extensively, and I was even eating organ meats, I was eating tongue, I was eating tripe, I was eating a couple of other things, you know, red meats and some pretty fatty cuts. I realized that I was doing a lot better with the less fatty cuts actually, digestively speaking. Mentally speaking, I needed some more fats. I, I felt like I needed some more fats, but whenever I consume meat that was a little bit fattier, that's when I really noticed that my stomach had a little bit of a harder time. And so my question was, how could I get the fatty beef cuts without getting the digestive problems or the digestive feel that I was getting, you know, that I wasn't getting with the leaner cuts of meat. So that's when I really started dabbing into this whole fermentation world. And that's where I see the benefits. And each one of these foods has a completely different effect but at the end of the day, they kind of end up all doing the same thing. So let's say I just had a really big piece of ribeye steak. Like, let's say we had a two pounder uh, piece of ribeye steak, you know? That is definitely gonna put me in a state where I'm still okay, you know? It's still a carnivore diet. It doesn't feel like eating super processed food or anything like that. It's the super processed carbs or nothing of that sort but it does feel a lot heavier. And I do feel like for the, that for the next 30 minutes or so, my stomach is gonna be in this like, uh, like, okay, this is a lot of meat state. And it is, it is a lot of meat. But whenever it's a lean source of meat, I don't feel like that. And when it's a fattier cut of meat, I really do feel like that. And again, the reason why I would want the fattier cut would be for the mental um, cognition. I really do feel there's a big, big difference. And so, I wanted to see if maybe one of these foods could help me break that down. And sure enough, once I started fermenting my own foods and trying out what, what worked for me and what didn't work for me, I really started noticing that pickles, even just adding pickles, my own pickles, to the end of a meal or adding a small amount of pickles was massive. It was huge. 
Same thing with the kimchi, same thing even with the sauerkraut, even though I didn't like it, I did see some good benefits with the sauerkraut. The kombucha at the end of a meal was good as well, but the kefir just feels, it's so weird. It, it like if you drink, like for me, how I feel is if I drink kefir um, after a meal or with a meal, it feels like in a couple of minutes, I give it like three, four minutes, it starts working. Something happens inside my stomach that I, I almost think about it as it, some people, like some things or soldiers go into my stomach and they just start breaking down whatever it is that I toss in there. It's it's fascinating. It's a, it's a really awkward feeling that I've never felt with any kind of food. And that got me thinking, you know, there may be something to this. And the more I've been consuming these, the better um, everything has gotten everything and so i've been seeing a lot of benefits to this and so again i see these as a supplement i mean i can still go ahead and eat meat out while i'm out and about without having these things but i definitely feel the difference and i feel the aid of using these so i don't think i'm going to be taking them out anytime soon especially kefir out of everything kefir is at the top for me right after that um would be kimchi and then right below that would be pickles. And kombucha, I think, would be at the bottom of the totem pole. But I think they are a great, great supplement to the carnivore diet. And here's why. As everybody always says, the carnivore diet is this big, big reset to your gut. Totally agree. 100% agree with that. So now that you got a complete brand new or, you know, clean gut after doing the carnivore diet, let's say you did it for six months three months whatever it may be you know you know you feel a lot better you know you've gotten all the um, terrible bacterial growth out of your system or you've gotten most of it out now what do we do i think these fermented foods fit in perfectly with the diet because right after now you can go ahead and populate your gut with some stuff that you know is good and that's why i started fermenting foods from scratch i wanted to know exactly what i was putting into my body i didn't want any extra additives i didn't want any preservatives i didn't want any of that that comes with a lot of the store-bought stuff you know and so that's why I decided to start fermenting my own food. And that's what I have been noticing. I think now that gut is in a way better spot, now it's it's been primed to go ahead and absorb all these bacteria, these helpful bacteria that are not just gonna be consumed and then flushed out, that they're gonna remain in my stomach and they're gonna be like little soldiers that are gonna be defending me against all this crappy stuff that is out there. Cause let's face it, you know, every now and then you wanna go in and, you know, you, you want to go and punish that buffet. You want to go ahead and punish those cookies, you know? And, and it's fine. You know, you're a human being. You have those leisure moments. You're going to have that time with your family. And if you don't have any kids or any really, really close family members, you know, um, it, it might be a little bit easier for you to say, well, just don't do that and be like super strict and firm about it. Yeah, try doing that for the rest of your life. You Like, I mean, I plan to live a really long life. This is why I try biohacking or, you know, I like to call it um, optimizing or human optimization a little bit more. But yes, it's the same thing, you know? I like to optimize everything for that same reason because I know that I got a really shitty hand of genes and I'm I'm talking crappy ones. Uh, and again, that was the, the big thing. That's why I changed from red meat to fish a little bit more. And uh, I'll explain that to you in the next video. I, I will go into depth into that. So stay tuned for that. But yes. I really, really look into this stuff because I want to prolong my life. I want to spend more time with these people. And if I am spending more time with my loved ones, what can I do to not exclude myself from them? while at the same time, you know, not excluding my likes, my my inner happiness sometimes, you know, um, sometimes there is some great joy that comes with just sitting down and having a good meal with everybody, not caring about what the hell is on the table, you know? At the end of the day, like, you know, I've taken some some step. I, I don't want to say that just because I was in this super restrictive diet or way of eating that I wasn't able to enjoy maybe a beer with my dad, you know, or maybe what could have been my last beer with my dad or, you know, or sit down and have a plate of beans, you know, with him or something like that. As, as bad as that may sound, there's some there's some badass beans going on in that house. So my dad loves beans and it kicks ass. So just saying it's in the jeans, guys. <laughs> I think there's a fine balance to all this, guys, and I really, really hope you guys understand that you don't have to exclude yourself, but steps such as these help you prevent or help you better handle those situations. So 
in this case now I know I have a super good ally and it's called kefir and I'm keep on and I make it at home and it's super easy to make I just put kefir grains into milk you let it ferment for 24 to 48 hours I let it ferment for 48 hours that way I get as much of the sugar out and leave as much of the beneficial stuff as possible and then I go ahead and drink it that's it I drink it after meals and that's it just a cup of it and that's all it takes and now I know I can take that just about anywhere and it'll help me out so so much yeah that's what's been going on guys i mean it's pretty straightforward these fermented foods have really changed my life i had to change my life because of my 23 and me results and uh, which i will show share with you in the next video and again it's all about optimizing what we have already I, again these are just supplements to my diet that i really really appreciate that i came across and now i don't think um that i'm ever taking them out i think meat is still the way to go or a carnivorous diet is still the way to go again given some organ meats and maybe some supplements depending on who you are there's specific requirements that you will need and go ahead use them you know some people need a little bit more of coq10 some you know, some people don't make glutathione as well some people don't convert vitamin d as easily as others you know go ahead and supplement with those if you know you require those go for it guys you know find the most bio uh, available form of of these supplements use it to your advantage that's why we have modern age technology if if we look at everything from the perspective that that's not what our ancestors used to eat well yeah our ancestors also didn't have cameras they did not have youtube they did not have cell phones they did not fly through the sky there wasn't any cars going around throwing smoke yeah like we can't avoid those things they're here we gotta live with them and by living with them it makes us better it helps us better to understand what our mortality is and once we understand that now we can better face it we can better approach it we can better prolong our lifespans and we can better our health overall and i think at the end of the day that's the bottom line how can you better your health in whatever environment in whatever situation in whatever your genes or ancestry may be with the help of ancestral wisdom of course but i think i am gonna leave it there guys thanks for joining me in another episode of sage experience Please go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe. You guys know the deal. Push that notification bell if you haven't already done so. But definitely, definitely push that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Arriba. If you haven't already done so. So stick around for the next video. I am going to be going over my genes and the gene results that I got and how I got them over at 23andMe. And I'm going to give you guys all the results and what I see. So that other video might be a little bit more of a lengthy video, but... I'll definitely be able to show you more of what I'm talking about with this, how each one of us has a different, completely different genetic variation and how we should start to adhere to that versus to, oh, get this diet, get that diet. No, I think we have to really start listening to what our bodies are telling us. And I think we're going to be able to better do that in the near future. So stick around for that, guys. But this video has gone on long enough, guys. Thanks for joining me. Zay. Out. Peace. And for all those of you guys wondering, yes, I am in my car right now. I am waiting for the storm to dissipate right now. It's pretty crappy. Yeah. <laughs>